Bourbonblog.com bringing you Hard Truth's new Sweet Mash Bourbons. There's three of them. I'm with my good friend Brian Smith. Hey, He's the master stiller. What's happening? There's three. You released three at once. Yes, we, we, figured, uh, we figured we might as well let the world know everything that we're doing, right? Everything. There's three of these. I love it when, a, when there's like one first bourbon release, but to do three at once, all Sweet Mash, you're one of only three distilleries in the country that are doing exclusively sweet mash bourbons. I mean, there's so much that you all are doing. No one else is doing. We're thrilled to be first talking about it here on Bourbon Blog. Uh, tell us about what we have here. Which, what have you been doing these last several years? You've been laying this whiskey down. Yeah, so so for, for those of you who have been to the distillery or are familiar with our toast coconut rum or, you know, some of our other products, and, uh, you know, we've we really built our distillery to uh, to produce bourbon and rye whiskey. So, right. you know, a couple of years ago, we released our sweet mash rye. Um, and then after that, the high road rye whiskey, which, you know, both of those have done really, really well. Um, but at the same time that we were making all those rye whiskeys, we've been making bourbon as well. But as I'm sure your, your fan base knows, bourbon tends to need a little more time in the barrel. Right. Um, and, and, you know, we wanted to make sure and get it right. So, uh, so while these are new, our newest, you know, members of our family, yeah. this bottle particularly, this was our first distillation on our still was that whiskey. Wow. So um, on our on our big bourbon column. Um, so we've been laying, we've, you know, had this laid down. I've been tasting it um, along the way from day one. Um, and uh, about middle of last year, we had decided we knew it was it was ready. I always, as a as a distiller, I kind of had a a thing in my head where I I I, I always wanted my fir our first bourbon release to be a bottled in bond. So right. um, we decided to take two of our mash bills and release them as bottled in bond. Um, the the mash bill in the black, the the sweet mash bourbon in the black label, yes. um, we have at ninety proof because we've you know we've heard a lot from our bar and restaurant partners that they they really you know like having a bourbon available that's at that 90 or below proof point for cocktails and different different reasons and so as we were tasting through all the mash bills that one just really 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 shines nice at 90 proof it's delicious it really does i'm tasting that yeah, now and again i'm gonna I'm, it, there's 22 states you're in i'm gonna have the website up so everybody can see all the states right there yep and, if you're and the bahamas and the Bahamas too. Oh yeah, the Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, that's a good reason to get down to the Bahamas and have some. I bourbon. know, right? <laughs> Somehow it's I still haven't gotten down there yet. Oh, right. I'll, I'll come with you with for the, mm -hmm. the bottle, bottle and bond Bahamas triple B bourbon. There you go. Uh -huh. This is lovely. So when I first tried this, I you know I love your your rhyme. So delicious, such clean mm -hmm. flavors, so many layers too. Your rye's a little higher proof, uh, mm -hmm. which I love sweet mash rye, but this. There's still the boldness. There's a there's a clean flavor, but there's mm. so much going on underneath. How did you how did you make that happen? How did you make this so sure. and so, but also so approachable? Yeah, thank you. So that's our that's our mash bill one, um, which is uh, seventy three percent corn, nineteen percent mm. rye, and eight percent malted barley. So it's a fairly classic um, right. range of of uh, mash bill for for a bourbon. So we knew we wanted one mash bill that was more in the kind of classic style. Um, you know, what I love about this is it, it's, it's even though it's at 90 proof, it's still got a very full uh, mouthfeel, a lot of viscosity, um, a lot of nice flavor. Um, it drinks it drinks higher in proof in a good way. You know, it's, it's nice and rich. It's not thin. Um, but yet it's really approachable and easy. So it's definitely a good sipper. Um, but also is, is great for cocktail making. And, you know, the other thing that we made a, a big decision to do was we really wanted to price these bourbons, um, in a price range that the people didn't have to really think too hard about the right. purchase. That's uh, and we, you know, we don't want them to collect it. We want people to drink this. Whiskey. You want them to drink it. These are all yes. roughly 50, so, give or take. yeah, 45, 45 retail for the, for the sweet mash bourbon the that you have mash. in hand. Yeah. And what a, I mean, what a powerful, delicious, just rich bourbon Thank for you. that. You're welcome. You know, it's a nice candy note. It's not overly sweet. Nice candy mm -hmm. notes, nice vanillas. There's even toward the end a little bit of, um, I get a little milk chocolate. There's 
There's definitely mm -hmm. some dessert notes coming through. Sure. If you're if people are watching this and they usually have, uh, again, depending upon where you are, Brian and I are in Indiana, but if you've usually been drinking Kentucky bourbons, a lot of places, we love Kentucky bourbons, but this for me, uh, and I know for you too, really speaks something powerful for just how unique and delicious mm -hmm. an Indiana bourbon can be. Tell yeah. me about that, how what that means to you and, sure. and what, what you've done. Well, and you know, just for your audience who maybe is not, not as familiar with us, so we are a grain to glass distillery. Um, you know, we don't buy our whiskey and, and right, put it in, a bear, uh, in, a, in a bottle. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that are putting Indiana bourbon and Indiana rye whiskey from MGP in bottles right now and building brands right. on them. So there is some definitely some awareness that Indiana can produce some great whiskeys. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, as far as craft whiskey, uh, you know, I think that, that Indiana is, is, is on the rise. We've got a lot of great distillers here in the state. Um, but, you know, we really built our plant to be um, as high quality as you can get in American whiskey. So we've got a Vendome, custom Vendome continuous column, um, and uh, we use independent stay barrels that are custom char and toasted. Um, our mash bills are, are designed to really highlight that sweet mash process. Um, and then, you know, we're able to tune our still to really get those really, we get a lot of uh, really high, sweet, like complex sugar and fruit notes out of our whiskeys that, you know, whether you're drinking one of our sweet mash bourbons or a sweet mash rye, it kind of carries through all of those. Whiskeys. It does. It's, mm. and that's from the, from the sweet mash, from the recipes, what's it from everything? Uh, you know, there's, there's so, it's funny. That's a great, fantastic question. I'd love to know exactly what the answer is. Um, but the, the reality is, is, you know, as a distiller, there are so many decisions that we've made along the way, including, you know, where to put your distillery, uh, what grains are you going to, you know, where are you going to supply your grains from, where are you getting your yeast from, your water supply, how do you tune your still, um, you know, char, toast combinations. So all those, I think all of those things, uh, you know, kind of come together in, in an entourage of, of, uh, of flavors that, you know, as long as you're producing and doing that consistently, you know, if your, your methods are consistent and your inputs um, that are going into your whiskey are consistent, you can kind of have that that through line. So we're really, really excited to uh, to introduce this to the world because, you know, I, I think that's, for me as a distiller, one of my greatest senses of pride is that, you know, together our distillery crew and our group has has really honed in on our own flavor profile that's truly hard truth. So, um, you know, I think of uh, like, you know, great musicians that I know, that you know you hear them play one note and you automatically know who who's playing the instrument right. you know um so I, I what i what i love is, is that we've really created a unique flavor profile that that i know people will be able to pick out in a blind lineup you're that musician your whole team is the old distillery we know this is something that's hard truth and it has a signature flavor i'm i went ahead and poured a little of the um sweet mash sweeted bourbon this one actually has your signature on it look at that ah look cool that. Look at that. Yeah. That's one of those that we, we got from uh, High Spirits here close by. We'll raise a toast to uh, Such. Um, oh, yeah. We love what Such and the gang are doing there, and Walter, everyone at High Spirits. We, you And again, if you're looking for this bourbon and you're not seeing it on the shelves yet, ask your retailer about it, if it's a state especially that you're in, because this is something for the flavor, for all the unique elements, Indiana, Sweet Mash, um, the, the price, it just clicks off, it checks off so many Items on a list of deliciousness that to know that oh, I can get this for, yeah, for 50, 55, this one is 55? Yeah, that one's 55, right. This is just incredible for um, for bourbon. I just, uh, I, yeah, I, just, I really love it. Um, and it well, again, you know, bottled, bottled in bond, does, you know, the bottled in bond designation really is is what, you know, I think for, for consumers out there, like I said, there are so many brands that are really bringing great whiskey to the to the right. shelves. Yes. Um, but a lot of those, a lot of that whiskey wasn't made in a distillery that has anything to do with that brand. You know, it was right. made at MGP or made at some Kentucky distilleries. Um, cool stories, cool bottles, great whiskey. Yeah. Um, but the authenticity isn't quite there. So, um, you know, when when you release something bottled in bond, you know what you were saying based on the the bottled in bond act, which 
for our bottled and bond whiskeys. You know, we we actually put part of the uh, bottled and bond act. Uh, I love it here. So, right there on the side, yeah. Right. So this was established in 1897, and what bottle? it says is essentially this was distilled at one distillery in one season. Uh, at least four year uh, under the under the uh, supervision of one master distiller, um, and bottled at exactly 100 proof and at least four years old. So you know what what that does is a lot of times when people make a whiskey blend, they'll use you know a combination of barrels. Maybe you know most of them are right down the middle, but some maybe not as good. But then they'll put a couple older barrels in the blend to kind of boost the flavor profile and, and pretty common in blending. Uh, with Bottled and Bond, you are tasting the flavor of that distillery. It's you one really season. Um, so all the whiskey that's in that bottle was distilled in the uh, or this, uh, spring of 2019. Um, so, you know, less than six months or around six months after we started running that still. So it's really exciting as a, as a distiller to release something that has bottled and bond on the front is is it's the most honest whiskey that you can that you can put out on the market it is it is and to approach uh well two two of the three of these of course we love the sweet match but to have two of the three of these be bottled and bond is yeah. something that's really impressive they're all really uh just even picking my favorite of these they're all so different this yeah. one the finish goes a whole different place i mean that those nice mm -hmm. soft notes uh there's so many popular weeded whiskeys as we know on the market weeded bourbons but mm. This has a very elegant flavor. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. I, I get uh, a lot of, well, I get a little bit more warmth on this, but I get just some just some great, um, there's some great fruit on this. I actually, I mentioned chocolate in the first one. I yes. get chocolate and a nice creaminess towards the middle and the end of this one too, but in a kind of a different fashion. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out, Tom. I know you have an excellent palate. With this weeded bourbon, for me, it is it is really out of the three offerings that we have. They're all great whiskeys for for their own purposes. But for me, the oily mouthfeel of this one and the mm. length of the finish, you know, there's yeah. a, and like you said, there's this. Uh, it's nice and soft and sweet on the mid palate, like you would expect from a weeder. Um, but instead of kind of falling off or you know just going away, it's got this really nice, warm, long um, kind of finish that for me is really nice you know i know you do a lot of cigar work it's nice with the cigar i can um, see that yeah but then there's that chocolate note in that whiskey so right. I, i'm i will tell you that we noted that as we were evaluating this whiskey uh, me and chris moore who is a fantastic partner in in crime on on all this blending and barrel management stuff and chris and i kept pulling up chocolate notes not dark yeah. chocolate but like a milk chocolate a really milk nice chocolate. creamy chocolate yeah. note um, and I will tell you that when you make a cocktail with this whiskey and dilute it a little bit, like in an old mm -hmm. fashioned or Manhattan, that chocolate really comes out. It's it comes nice. through. It has that chocolate yes. like yeah. old fashioned. Yeah. We'll have to try that later tonight. I almost yeah. get, the more I sip it, a little bit of that milk chocolate, cher a little cherry note too, maybe a little yes. cherry against a little fruit. Yeah. Uh, there is something very complimentary to tobacco. I get that. Um, mm. I can, I can, I can't wait to try it with a cigar. This is uh yeah. Really special. And when you think about a lot of weeded bourbons that are a little tougher to find than they used to be, I mean, just go look for this one uh, as soon as you can, because what Brian and the team have, have done there is something just so special and just it, it's vibrant. It's deep. It's it's these are these don't remind me. I mean, I again, I, I mean, yeah, elements. We can tell it's a bourbon and I, I know good notes of a bourbon. But when I taste each of these. They don't taste like other bourbons I've had. And I feel like yeah, that was intentional. Is that what for sure? Like? For yeah. sure was. I mean, you know, I, I love I love to uh you know, I love to nod to to tradition and we're not right. we're not doing anything to kind of twist tradition or you know, try to put your spin on something for the sake of doing it. Um really the the uniqueness and the flavor just comes from the authenticity of the place and the people making the whiskey really does sweet mash um mm -hmm. i think people a lot of people watch know what that is but what why did you all choose sweet mash explain what you what do you think it does for for your whiskeys sure well so what i think it does for what i know it does for the whiskey for us is it really celebrates the grain in a different way so um sometimes when people describe whiskeys as being grainy 
they're not necessarily meaning it in, their, in, in a good way. Um, right. But grain has such, um, you know, the grain obviously is where a great deal of your flavor comes from. And there are some wonderful, bright, fruity notes that, that can be found in the grain that oftentimes get muted in the sour mashing process. So, um, you know, with sweet mashing, what you're getting is a little softer mouthfeel, very viscous um, oil, oil content, oiliness to the, to the whiskey, which mm-hmm. helps with that finish. Um, and then um, for me, it just celebrates that grain in the, in the so, so soft mouthfeel, complexity um, with the grain flavor. Uh, but what attracted me to it was, was literally my palate. I mean, the first time that I um, got to know um, Shane and Pat at Wilderness Trail, they let me taste, this is before they had any whiskey in the market, they let me taste their oldest whiskey at the time, which was a two-year-old rye whiskey, still in the barrel. And um, it just blew me away, the, the depth of complexity. And it, it didn't taste older. It just, it tasted unlike any other whiskey I'd ever tasted before. And for me, in the best way possible. So, right. you know, uh, not, not surprisingly, our whiskey really doesn't taste like their whiskey. Um, because yeah. I think there's there's so much that has to do with place and water and and grain that contributes to that um, flavor profile. But I will say that that using that process of sweet mashing really celebrates like whatever grain whatever grain water inputs that you are using, it helps you to celebrate the best of those things. Oh, it, it truly does. It, it truly does. And as I taste this uh, this last one here, the um... The four grain bourbon, also bottled in bond. Oh, yeah. um, mm. This one is uh, again. You get that DNA as you talked about, mm-hmm. but this one's sixty nine percent corn, nineteen percent wheat. Uh, or actually, no, wait a minute, that's wrong. I will go. You tell me what the mash bill on this. Yeah, one is. sure. So that yeah. one, the four grain, corn, rye, wheat, and barley. Yeah, the four grain is going to celebrate corn more than any of the other right. three mash bills. So Got the four it. grains, seventy eight percent corn, seventy nine. Yep, nine rye, nine wheat, and four malted barley. Four, it's a little bit of malted barley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so really, so really what I love, you know, Doug Miller, who is our corn farmer in uh, Brown County and Rush County, Indiana, he grows tremendous corn. I mean, the, the, the corn that we use for all of our whiskeys is, is outstanding. <clears throat> Whenever I developed this mash bill, I really wanted, I knew I wanted one mash bill to really highlight his corn. Um, cause I knew we had all these great ryes going in. We were going to have this really nice weeded bourbon. So for the four grain, I really wanted to have something that, that, that celebrated that, that nice, you know, um, corns there. four grain adds, you know, having the rye in there and the wheat and malted barley and corn, you get a different kind of complexity. Um, yes. but I really wanted the corn to shine on this one. And, and man, I, I gotta tell you, this one is like a, a butterscotch candy and, uh, it, yeah. it's, it's so sweet. It has a um, it has a very autumnal note to me. I mean, I, I like mm-hmm. you know autumn all year long, kind of butterscotch yeah. apple. You get kind of yeah. that candied apple. Yes, um, uh, I get a, just a hint of something spicy, um, yeah. mid palate, maybe even a little something like a like a pipe tobacco, a little bit. Uh, right. But it just goes yeah. a lot of places. This this is the same corn on the others though. Oh. Yes, okay. same, there you are. same corn. Yeah, same corn. Correct. Same corn. Uh, and again, there's some of the grains that are on these that come from Southern Indiana too, right? Yeah. So some of our, a portion of our rye, rye grains come from Dwayne Kuhlenschmidt down yeah. here, uh, Mount Vernon, Evansville area. Yeah. If, you, if anybody from the tri-state's watching, you'll, you'll know part oh, yeah. of it from this. You've, you've really yeah. captured uh, the whole state. Is, or is most of it Indiana? Part of the grains are from other places too? Most of the grain, so all of our corn, most of our wheat, and most of our, or not most of our rye. I'm working on it. Doc, Doc uh, Kulenschmidt and I yeah. are, are uh, trying to get get to a, a place where we can, you know, get him growing more of our rye rye grain. But, uh, right. you know, the, the nice thing, if, you, if you've not been to Hard Truth, we have beautiful campus, 325 acres, you know, big restaurant, music venue on our property. We do tours course. and all that. But, but my point is, you're talking about the Indiana thing. I mean... You know, we are a, a, a group of really passionate, hardworking Hoosiers. Uh, our distillery crew there are some of the hardest working, dedicated folks nice. making great whiskey. So, you know, the, the what you're tasting in that glass is the result of, 
of definitely not just me, um, uh, mostly other people. So all their hard work, dedication um, to, to creating, you know, something that they're proud of. And I think that, you know, uh, Indiana can be proud of, you know, our retailers, but then also, you know, this is America's spirit. So, yeah. um, you know, we make it right here in the heartland. It's a good thing. And, you know, really in Southern Indiana where we are, you know, the, if you look at it on a map and you look at climate trends and, you know, humidity and temp and um, all those things, you know, it's, it's, we're not dissimilar from Kentucky in the ability to have, you know, those temperature fluctuations, great water and all that to make great, uh, great whiskey. They've just, uh, they've done a great job of building that industry over the last hundred years or so. And, uh, um, but, you know, Indiana is definitely, definitely on its way up. It is. It is. And these are all categories you don't see um, every day pronounced and, and just put into one bottle. Bottle and bond, weeded. Uh, with sweet mash, you have the four grain. I've seen other four grains, but this is bottle and bond, something very unique. Uh, and it's four grain. Um, and then you talk about the grains, the importance, the, the price point, just how beautiful it all is. It's just um, yeah. there's so much that's done right here. And again, look for all three of these. If you can't find them uh, near you, Ask your retailer, and um, they'll be. I'm not going to hold up all three, but I'll hold up a couple of these. Uh, they'll be, they'll be near you soon, and then you're going to be on the road sharing these with people this year, and just really spreading the word of your bourbon, aren't you? I am. So the good good news is, um, you know, because we're a uh, a brand that is growing, um, it's not quite as hard to find our whiskeys. But I will tell you that even though, you know, you come and see the distillery and it's a big place and we do make a considerable amount of whiskey. Um, my guess is in, you know, pretty soon because of the amount of whiskey we actually have and that we make um, in our, you know, as we get into a national footprint, it's going to be a little bit harder to find. I will tell you one other thing. The mm. four grain is only in Indiana. Okay. So, so for, for your folks out there, um, the the black label the sweet mash bourbon is distributed in all of our states the weeded is i think in about 12 states and then the four grain is indiana only because we've just got limited very it's limited amounts of that one so the uh that would be the rarest of the three and the others you can find yes. in other states and then the sweet mash you can find in all the states yes yeah and then you know so really with these three whiskeys in our sweet mash rye cask strength and our high road rye that we released last year uh, that really makes up our five core whiskeys and then of course you know as folks of hard truth our fans of hard truth know we like to play a lot with barrel finishes and master distillers reserve so we'll always have those fun kind of one-off things coming through. i love the year. what you do uh, yeah but these are our core whiskeys yeah. now yeah i love the uh the px yeah. finish the ones you did the oh, yeah thanks all were beautiful and then you have um of course, for those that have always enjoyed the clear spirits, you're going to keep on doing those. Um, some oh, yeah. very special spirits that you put a lot of love into those too. The rum, the vodkas, the gins, everything. Everything you all are doing, you've done so well. Thanks oh, so thank much, you. Brian, for um, yeah, thank you, Tom. letting us try with the, these with you and, and being um, among the first to talk about them on bourbonblog.com. Get oh, yeah. to Hard Truth. Visit them if you're near um, Nashville, Indiana, not too far from Bloomington. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you soon, Brian. Hey, Tom. Thank you so much. Cheers, buddy. Thanks. Cheers.